does the HBU HSD partner with? Well, we are partnered with the Coastline Community Colleges, and so that's Golden West and Orange Coast College and also Coastline College. Oh, so we've been talking relationships, right? With each other, boys and girls, cooties, all that stuff Can't on campus that we're offering dual enrollment and they'll get college credit and high school credit. So, so how is dual enrollment different for those? Well, that is a really good question and I uh, understand that, that a student might be apprehensive. And it is a college level class, just like an AP class is a college level class. Um, hi everyone, my name is Derek Aoyoung and I'm Westminster High School's ASB Prime Minister and I'm also Westminster High School's VACC Outreach Coordinator and today we'll be interviewing Mrs. Carey. Thank you Derek. Hi everyone, I'm really very pleased to be here. I am Diana Carey and I am a trustee for the Huntington Beach Union High School District and today we're going to be talking about a wonderful program called dual enrollment. Mrs. Carey, before we start with dual enrollment, I see that you have an Aoyai on and it's really pretty. Where did you get it? I got it down in Little Saigon uh -huh. and uh, where I got get all my Aoyais. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we have a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many total Aoyais do you have in your collection? Well, I have been collecting Aoyais for a long time mm -hmm. and right now I have about 40. Wow. And I have them for various occasions. And um, so if I'm going to a different venue, like Temple or for Tet, then I, I were, try and wear an appropriate yes. uh, Aoyai. And I love them. They're my absolutely favorite, um, you know, ethnic mm, yes. dress uh, in all the world. Mm. And they're just beautiful. And so I, I really treasure them. Do you remember your very first Aoyai? I do remember my first Aoyai, and it's my very favorite Aoyai, too. And it has uh, two beautiful koi fish on it, mm -hmm. and so it, every time I wear it, and, and by the way, it's in the Westminster School colors, it's black and red, mm -hmm. uh, and it reminds me of the legend of the koi fish. And so, to this day, it's my very favorite one. So I have, a, I have several friends that are in dual enrollment classes and they've been talking to me about their dual enrollment classes. Could you explain to the audience as well as me a little bit more about what dual enrollment is? Well, absolutely. Dual enrollment is a wonderful program that we have. We have it in conjunction with the community colleges and it allows our students to take classes and get credit, college credit, their college level classes and high school credit mm -hmm. for taking the class. And so that really gives our students a leg up on their education and also their career choices. That sounds amazing. Uh, what, which community colleges does the HBU HSD partner with? Well, we are partnered with the Coastline Community Colleges, and so that's Golden West and Orange Coast College and also Coastline College. And we have this you know, partnership since 2016. Wow. So Derek, what classes are your friends taking? Uh, so some of my friends are taking Intro to Statistics as well as English 100, which is like freshman composition. Oh, that's yes. really, really good. Because now when they get to college, yes. they'll have you know college credit for that, which is wonderful. So it puts them ahead of other students. Yes. Wow, I had no idea that we partnered with three colleges. I thought we only partnered with Golden West because that's what is offered at Westminster High School. Why do you think dual enrollment is so beneficial for all students? Well, dual enrollment is really positive for students and it offers many advantages. Now the first advantage would be it's a cost savings because our students can take these college classes and they're free to them. And that way, when you're actually in college, I mean, you have to pay tuition and you have to pay for books and other expenses, but now you can take those uh, credits, so it gives you a financial in incentive mm -hmm. yeah. and it helps you along your way. So your college experience is going to cost less. So that's one thing. Um, another thing uh, which is really important is it's um, 
efficient time efficiency. And what that means is that because you're taking the classes here mm -hmm. and you're getting credit for both, that means later on you don't have to take those um, those classes because you've already taken them, which is really, really uh, important. And if you get like an A, B, or C, which most of our students get, um, then automatically a college has to give you that credit. They can't not give it to you because you've taken it at a college. Wow, that's so special. It, it is really special because it, it saves our families um, a tremendous amount of money because college can be very, very expensive, you know, depending yeah. upon yeah. where you go. And even if you're at um, the college, the California state college system, mm -hmm. you know, you still might spend, you know, 20000 a year. So, I mean, it, it, it's a real benefit mm -hmm. to our family. One of the other uh, really beneficial aspects is it helps you with college readiness. And you get a chance to experience a college level class, you know, while you're in a little bit, you know, safer, you know, environment. Yes. And, you know, you get to, again, as I said earlier, you get to do time management and that type of thing. So that is, is really important as well. Okay, another thing that's really important is you get to look at uh, different aspects of college. So you get to experiment with what you want to do. So what's really good about that is, you know, you're not set to a specific path. So if you're taking the classes here, and um, getting the college credit for it, you know, you might decide that you don't want to be, you know, a doctor or an engineer, and you want to do something else. And so you're able to make that decision. And you know, and of course, it doesn't cost anything because the classes are are free. So the thing is, it gives our students a lot of, of alternative experiences, which is really important um, in life if you're working or. Uh, you know, if you're going to college. Wow, these benefits are like making me wish that I took dual enrollment classes, but I've heard that it's only during the summer. Are there any like dual enrollment classes that are available during like the spring, the fall, the winter? Yes, all of our dual enrollment classes now, I mean, we offer them in the fall, in the spring, and also in the summer. And, um, you know, some of them are online and some of, are, um, some of them are on the high school, mm -hmm. uh, the actual high school campus. But um, when we started a long time ago, you know, we've really mm -hmm. expanded. So yeah. now we're able to offer um, many more classes than we were originally. Wow. So Derek, what uh, dual enrollment classes do you think that you would be interested in? Um, honestly, all of them sound pretty good, <laughs> but um, the one that I'm most interested in is would have to be uh, e econ. econ. Yeah. That's uh, that is a good choice yeah. because I know that you're a senior this year, yes. so you know um, choices are a little bit limited. Yeah. Then um, what we try and do uh, is we try and start our freshmen, incoming yes. freshmen, out uh, and tr get them to take health. Uh, during the, the summer. So when they start their experience here at Westminster High School, they already have one college class under uh, their belt. Mm -hmm. So what if students are like worried about the course load of dual enrollment classes? Because I know that uh, like having AP or honor classes, those are um, typically have a bunch of like a lot of course load to it. So how is dual enrollment different from those? Well, that is a really good question, and I uh, understand that, that a student might be apprehensive. And it is a college-level class, just like an AP class is a college-level yes. class. So, um, but we have a very, very high pass passing rate mm -hmm. for our dual enrollment classes because our students are so well prepared. Matter of fact, we have uh, an 89% pass rate and that's higher than n normal college students' mm -hmm. passing rate is for the classes that they take. And again, um, if you when you take the class, you know, and you get an A, B, or a C, you know, you have those credits. And wherever you transfer to, the college has to give you those credits. And so, you know, while it's probably equivalent, um, you know, to the AP class, I think the difference is, which is really a, a good difference, is that when you take the dual enrollment class mm -hmm. and you get those credits, you have those credits. Yeah. It's not like you're waiting for the yeah. test, you know, the AP test, and then you may or may not get credit. 
And um, one of the things that's wonderful about dual enrollment is you get the grade credit, but you also get the unit credit, which is really important because in AP classes, some colleges will take the class that's um, for credit, but they don't give you the unit credit. So you have to take an elective or something else to make up those units. Mm -hmm. Aside from the title, what kind of class is this? A dual enrollment class. So it's college credit and it's high school credit. You are being given the opportunity to do a lot of independent work. A sense of what is called empowerment. I can do it by myself. Just like when you learn to tie your shoes. When you learn to pee and wipe yourself right. Too late. Happy Halloween. Nope. You're not dressed, you are. Happy Halloween. Isabel? Not here. Let's do first and second period with no internet. What did you guys do first and second period? At lunchtime, have you guys seen Mr. Fredrickson? Because I've been looking for him. I'm missing my merit badge for helping the elderly. And I need to help him because if I don't help him, I can't complete all my merit badges. But I think he'll be here at lunch in the gym. So if you guys want to meet Mr. Fredrickson, he's a really nice guy. He kind of grew taller this Oh, so we've been talking relationships, right? With each other, boys and girls, cooties, all that stuff, dating. However, what happens like today? What happens when you have a friend that texts you? I am 47 years old and a friend of mine texted me this morning, like at six o'clock. He said, hey, I don't feel like going to work today. Well, my girlfriend and I are having problems. Hold on, let me, let, let, me, let me get this last level up. Let me level up one, one time, one time. Do you cut them off or do you listen? So with a partner, I'm gonna leave this up here and we can go through it. It says, Ricardo has a part-time job after school working in a hardware store. He just heard of an opening at work. He immediately called his friend Luis to tell him about it. Ricardo told Luis the questions he was asked in his interview so that Luis could be prepared when he met the manager. Ricardo also put in a good word for his, with his boss. Ricardo knows that Luis really needs a job to help support his family because Luis's father has just lost his job. What are ways you can support your friend? Luis's father just got deported, let's make it real. I had a student, he was in eighth grade, dad got pulled over and he got deported. And on a Google Doc, as you work together, figure out these answers. What ways are you already supporting your friends? Do you support your friends? Are you a supporter of your friends? When they're sad, when they're hurt, when they're lonely, there was a girl crying in the quad the other day and her friends were next to her, trying to help her console her. My name is Leonard Ibarra. I teach health class at Westminster High School. This currently is a dual enrollment health class. Um, today I'm just like Russell, it's Halloween. So it's just, you gotta get in the spirit of the day, right? Last semester I had the opportunity, last two semesters at the dual enrollment class, the teacher came in through Zoom. Another teacher came in the second semester presently on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They had a lot of lecture-based classes, kind of like a college course. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or throughout the whole week, the students did work. Now, the way that differed from what I had normally is I would lecture my students. I would not lecture them, but we would lecture. And we would go, you do, I do, we do. And we had a lot of interaction. The college teachers that came through, whether it was Zoom and in person, it was kind of just like a college course, just gave it all out, never really asked questions. They had it on paper, they had assignments. Whereas here they get a little more one-on-one, -on -one, like, like the regular health classes that are not dual enrollment. However, they do get a little bit heavier lecture because of the content and what they're expected to rise up to, being that it's a college course. Aside from the title, what kind of class is this? A dual enrollment class. So it's college credit and it's high school credit. You are being given the opportunity to do a lot of independent work. A sense of what is called empowerment. I can do it by myself. Just like when you learn to tie your shoes. When you learn to pee and wipe yourself right. When you learn to eat without spilling or pour the milk without spilling. Even adults, even grown folks. If you have questions, what your job is. For the next 20 minutes, you got to create a dilemma amongst your friend they got a bad grade in school they suck at math class they want to leave but they just haven't been taught the right way from the teacher can you do you guys know how to explain math here's an example 
I noticed that Marcus seemed dejected. Dejected means sad. What was the second part? Oh, when we had a moment alone, I told him what I noticed and asked if he wanted to talk. You can't confront somebody out in public. Yo, what are you crying for? Look, she's crying. <laughs> yes. So the benefit of the dual enrollment class, the students are able to gain a little more confidence. Aside from getting five credits for college, I mean, they're doing a lot of work on their own. They have to work with each other. They have to work individually, as well as a lecture. I'm not lecturing as long and monotoned and non-story, non-personal as the college professors did. I think breaking it down because we teach high school or I teach at high school. I know what the kids are feeling. Um, I understand where they're coming from. And so with the kids being here and me being here, it's a little more personal than a college teacher coming in and not knowing how high school kids work or function. Hey, Boo Grams, Yamalif. Someone sent you a boo, Graham. They said, Yamali, you are my boo. I hope you have a spooky time at Halloween. Here's some Twizzlers for you. So one of the challenges that I have noticed over the year and a half with dual enrollment and with this course is it is a lot of individual work and a lot of the students get behind. They're not completing the work. They don't know who to ask to help for the work. And if their assignments lock, they get confused as to how to unlock it. They are a little, they're upper level kids in like merits programs, AP programs, um, honors programs. So they do do their work. However, they complete their work. However, they're just afraid to ask for more time. Now that's the challenge. The benefit is they do gain a sense of confidence when they do complete all their work, especially on their own with limited instruction. And when they do well on the tests and assessments based on the lecture, that's when you can see like there's, there's personal growth within each student. Gosh, your dad left you? And you're like, no, he didn't leave me. I mean, he was like, why'd you, why'd you throw my business out there? Or like in this one, that was that one. This one's school related. I uh, realized that you're having trouble keeping up in social studies. She offered her to take notes, to help her, to show her way of taking notes. Every Thursday we have a counselor come on campus from 11 to one o'clock. So that's during lunchtime. And the students have the opportunity to go with her or with the counselor in the library to get extra help if they need, or just to be advised on how their emails work from the college, how their Canvas course works from the college. Their Canvas course is the same as ours. The trouble is accessing it. Uh, the kids get a little confused. There's more to go on with their, their uh, email address. Now, as far as parents and help being helped or helping with the student, that is 100% they should be helping. The scary part is because it's a college course, parents don't have the opportunity to follow their grade and they don't have to really necessarily know what their grade is. Whereas at the high school level, we invite parents, we, they can follow along, they can log in. Because it's a college course, parents aren't allowed. We don't have that option to let parents follow. They have to actually get involved with their child and talk to them and find out what they're thinking and what's really going on personally. They can't follow the computer and check on their grades and check on their Aries. They just have to hope that they're doing well. But of course, most students I hope are talking to their parents about their current academic status. Uh, when we had a moment alone, like a moment alone, can I can call him out in the middle of everybody. Marcus told me about a problem he was having with parents and I was actively listening. This one is about school. Just an example. So one of your friends has a problem with school, one of your friends has a problem with social studies, right? So how would you help them? I think this class will encourage parents to talk to their students, especially knowing that it's a college-weighted class or they can get college credit. They aren't paying for it, it is free. However, they know that they're getting college credit as well as high school credit, and it's a heavier load. So if because I can't follow you, if it feels my child, if I can't follow you, I'm gonna be involved in asking you, you know, how's the dual enrollment? How is your grade? How is your progress? Are you finishing your assignments? considering that I cannot go in and check them. So it is a plus to help these kids get more involved with their parents or the parents to be more involved with their, with their children. No, let's get like two. Just two. How did I become a college teacher all of a sudden is what I'm thinking. What? So if you are currently teaching in your subject area and you have a master's in your subject area, you will qualify to teach through the college at your school and be a in on-campus teacher through the college and it's beneficial. 
Now, if you don't have a master's in your credential, you may be grandfathered in, as it might be called college course equivalency. There's a few papers to fill out. If you've been teaching for a long period of time, sadly, I've been teaching for 21 years, 18 years here at Westminster High School. And all of my credential, my transcripts, everything filtered right in, and I was qualified to be hired by the college to teach this course. And that's just how it happened. So if you have a master's degree in your subject, and if you have equivalency, uh, teaching equivalency by years and by subject matter, you can qualify to teach your subject on your class as well as the dual, with, as well as the dual enrollment. And of course, there is a little stipend for it. Um, and so that's how that process works. Do you encourage more? I would encourage more teachers to do it. It's you're doing the same thing you're already doing. It's a little bit more lecture based. You have Tuesdays and Thursdays that they're accountable for. And I mean, the kids are upper level kids where they're gonna work, they're gonna put in the effort and it will, it's beneficial to do it. You're not bringing someone else in here and you're taking a seat and watching them teach or attempt to teach because not to knock any college professors, I might be there one day, but at this point, the college professors have no connection with the students and that's why we teach high school because we connect. Um, Especially in this subject, I mean, I teach health class, I'm sure for every subject it's the same, you have a passion for it, but it's really beneficial if we teach them and get them that same credit, especially if they're bringing in first year teachers in the college or a teacher that's on Zoom and you got a dog barking in the background and it's kind of like, what's going on? You know, you've been recording me. I think I should record you and see if you can help me find my snipe. His name is Kevin. I have chocolate for him. I think I have some chocolate. Oh, I threw it all out there in the trail. Maybe he'll, oh, there it is. Some Halloween chocolate for. My name is Leonard Ibarra. I teach health at Westminster High School. I teach dual enrollment health at Westminster High School through Golden West College. And it's a great opportunity for everybody. I uh, would look into it if you can.